Today I'm going to share with you my best weight loss tip, something that the people in the 1970s used to their advantage to almost effortlessly stay slim. And it's coming right up. The obesity epidemic in North America really took hold about 1977. Prior to that, people were not really watching what they ate and yet they were able to stay effortlessly slim. What was their big secret? I grew up in the 1970s and when I think back on what I ate, it probably wasn't foods that people would consider slimming today. I ate a sandwich almost every single day for lunch, which was two slabs of white bread with processed meat in the middle. I'd have a juice box and maybe some cookies that my mom packed. And it wasn't just me. From grade one until grade 13, pretty well everybody in my class would brown bag their lunch and eat it in the cafeteria. Uh, nobody ate kale, nobody ate quinoa, nobody ate whole wheat pasta, Whole wheat bread was around, but very few people ate it. Not many people were watching their uh, fats or their carbs. There's The diet industry was relatively small. The aerobics uh, boom hadn't taken place, so people were not exercising that much either. So looking at that, you might expect that there was a lot of problems with weight, but there wasn't. In fact, people seem to stay slim almost no matter what they ate. There was no uh, government uh, programs telling you what to eat. Your mom told you what to eat. And that was a bit about it. So why was there so little obesity? Well, here's the secret. They didn't eat all the time. There's two important parts about weight loss. One is that the foods that they were eating, and the second thing is how often you're eating. And those two things go hand in hand. If you're eating all these foods that are not particularly healthy, as judged by today's standards, the white bread and the sandwiches and the juice box and the cookies, well, if you're not eating all the time, well, it may not be that bad overall. If you're to eat it constantly, then that can be a problem. And there's been changes since the 1970s in both what we're eating and how often we're eating. The foods that we eat are now much more processed. They tend to be a lot less natural than they used to be. We tend to eat out a lot more than we used to be. And those are things that we talk about in our diet. But we also have to talk about how often we're eating because there's been a big change since the 1970s. Back then, people ate three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you tried to eat snacks, well, nobody really thought it was a good idea. Your mom would not have snacks available. If you wanted an after dinner snack, she would say, hey, you should eat more at dinner time. There was no eating at your table. There's no eating at the computer. There was no eating in front of the TV. None of that. It was breakfast, lunch, dinner, that's it. In the 70s, people ate about three times a day. By the 2000s, people were eating close to six times a day. So that's gonna make a big difference. Both of those are very important. And while I'm not trying to say that the foods we're eating are not important, we have to look at how often we're eating as well. And that was the secret to the success in the 1970s. But how to do this practically? I have three hacks that you can use to stop yourself from eating all the time. Number one, keep it boring. If you limit the variety of foods that you eat, you're naturally going to eat less. If you are eating the same foods over and over and over again, in my case, the sandwich every day, I'm going to be a lot less prone to eating too much of this. There's two big reasons why we eat. One is that we're hungry, but that's not the only reason we eat. We also eat because we enjoy it. Food is delicious. So therefore, you can eat for hunger or you can eat for pleasure. 
If you are eating the same foods again and again and again, the pleasure starts to diminish. And it doesn't matter what food it is, if you're eating it every day, it soon becomes routine and it soon becomes boring. Then you're going to eat until you're no longer hungry, but you're not going to eat more because you simply don't want to. That's often the secret with a lot of restrictive diets. If you have a diet, for example, that cuts out um, meat, you're going to naturally limit the food variety. If you have a diet that cuts out vegetables and is meat only, you're going to keep it boring. If you have a diet that is very low in carbs, you're going to eat a less variety of foods. If you are eating low fat, you're going to have low variety of foods and so on and so on. So the secret to success for a lot of diets is simply that they limit the food variety. And you can do this yourself once you understand the power of limiting food variety. It's often also important to eat natural foods because there is a natural limit to how often we can eat them without getting bored. Whereas processed foods are often designed to be addictive. Uh, so adding a lot of MSG or adding a lot of salt or additives or sugars keeps the foods interesting to us even when we would naturally get bored of them. Number two, fat fasting. This is a hack to try and get control of your appetite for people who really struggle with hunger or with cravings. And the idea is to allow a period of very high fat foods. By doing this, this allows the body to transition into burning fat for fuel, which then makes it easy when you're trying to not eat or fast for longer periods of time, where you're going to try and rely on your stores of body fat. Because whether the body is burning dietary fat or body fat, it's the same process. If you're coming off a period of high carbs and high sugar, like the holidays, for example, or you're having extreme stress, extreme hunger, extreme cravings, you can allow your period of fat fasting before getting into a period of restricted eating. The idea is to stave off the hunger by only eating very high fat foods. No dairy or nuts because it's very easy to overeat them, but things like eggs, bacon, salmon, sardines, olive oil, avocado, butter, and any of the leafy greens. Teas, coffees, and bone broths are also allowed. Even if you wind up eating a lot and very often in the first few days, it'll gradually taper off and then you'll be able to control that hunger more easily. And this is one hack that we found successful in our clinic at thefastingmethod.com to transition people into a more orderly form of eating. Number three, exercise. Exercise is generally not that effective as a weight loss tool because the number of calories that you burn during exercise generally is very small compared to how many we eat in a day. However, there are huge benefits to exercise and one of them is to take your mind off of food. Think about a time that you were playing basketball or playing soccer or going for a bicycle ride or going for a run. In the middle of that exercise, have you ever thought, wow, I'm really hungry? Probably not. Because if you're in the middle of high exertion, you're in the middle of a tennis game, your focus is on playing the game. The muscles are demanding the blood. It's the blood is not there for your digestive system. So you're not thinking about food, you're not hungry, and you're shutting down your digestive system in order to shunt the blood over to the working muscles. So it's a great way if you have trouble keeping your mind off of the food, to do some form of exercise. The other thing that's often very good about exercise is if you can get out into nature, if you're going for a long hike or a long bicycle ride, uh, a walk along the river or something like that, that is a natural stress relief. And it's how we evolve to handle stress. So picking up a hobby, picking up 
some kind of exercise or game is a great way to stop eating all the time. It really gives you something else to do that is going to take that hunger away because you're focused and your blood supply is going away to your muscles instead of to your stomach and you're not thinking about the hunger. In summary, my best tip to staying thin like it's 1970, don't eat all the time. It's not so easy in today's world where food is all around us. There's fast food joints everywhere we go and even in our workplaces. But there's hacks you can use. One, you can try exercising. Number two, you can try fat fasting. And three, keep it boring. Limit the number of foods that you eat and you will naturally reduce the number of times that you eat them. If you enjoyed this, maybe share it with somebody. You might help them. They might learn something too. And if you could do me a favor and hit that like button down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.